Okay, so I can see that things aren't broken. Um, anyway, let me check on my other, oh good, someone's on, fabulous. This was one step better than I was on Monday, so good. Let me check Facebook, let's see her, other weight doctor. It's Wednesday, hello Rachel Smith Studio, thanks for joining us. Um, go down, 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 where's, where's our, there she is, okay. All right, guys. Oh, Becky's on. Jeanette's on. Hi, sweetheart. Um, do, 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 do. What am I doing? Oh, let's go to YouTube. So in case I have YouTube friends on, I can see your questions. Hi, Joanne Keeney. Gosh, I haven't seen you on in a little bit. Thanks for joining us. Um, videos, lives, view in the control room. Okay. Goodness. I think we are all here. Hello from the Harrows. I think it's Kendra. How are you? Mom's on. Hi, Mom. Nancy from Lake Stevens. Cindy. <laughs> Melanie. Hi, friend. Did you guys see? Maybe not. If Missy pops on, she may have seen. We're expecting a winter storm watch this weekend. What the heck? We don't get Warner Storm watches in October in Seattle. We're supposed to go over to the other side of the mountains too, which makes me nervous because um, we have to drag a trailer back this week. Good. I'm glad you're good, Miss Kendra. So today is our Quilt As You Go. Hi from your in the road, end of the road. <laughs> Sandy Reese, hello. Oh, Lawrence is back on. Hi, Lawrence. I missed you on Friday. Oh, computer hardware dish issues. That'll do it for sure. Um, so today is Quilt As You Go, and uh, our block for the week is from Winslow, Arizona. And I'm sure you guys all are familiar with that famous Eagle song, um, standing on the corner of Winslow, Winslow, Arizona. Hi, Pam Green, and hi, Pam Blanchard from Louisiana. Um, and, uh, so I thought we would do a Route 66 block. How cute. We are actually going to talk about a couple of different techniques and no one say anything about my manicure. I got half of it off and I gave up on the last three fingers. It'll, it'll go down tonight. <laughs> Cindy said, take chains. I know. Lightly, lightly snowing in Snohomish. Mom, I did not hear that. It's sunny here. We did have a good couple of claps of thunder this morning and some very angry skies. Hi, Cindy from YouTube. Oh, good. She says, I'm so happy to catch you live. She goes, I always watch later. Well, you made it, girl. You're here. And Fran. Okay, Fran, did you look at those for those numbers on the feet? Oh, uh, Sandy says, I'm driving from Florida with my husband and I'm on the road. Well, be careful. Tell your husband to drive safely. So anyway, Route 66. So tonight we are doing two different techniques, new techniques to us. And we are going to do a raw edge applique technique on the 66s. Um, and then we are going to do the, the echo quilting around the outer edge. So I actually have my teacher's board today um, because I'm going to put my teaching cap on and we're going to talk about echo, echo. Okay, don't say that too fast. Hi, Carla. Thanks for watching. Um, and we're going to talk about all this fun stuff on the featherweight. So let's talk about what I uploaded first. <laughs> oh, Bonnie Pelton says, I live about five miles from old Route 66. That's awesome. Oh, Jeanette out in Sammamish, which is out here in the Seattle area, said they had hail go through. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Carla wants to know how my Wednesday is going. If I'm being totally transparent, I am a little overwhelmed this week. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on and I'm having a little trouble keeping all the balls in the air like a juggler. But I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it through. I just know it. I feel like I have more stuff to do than time to do it in. And everybody is just going to have to give me a little grace to, this week because I'm, I'm doing the best I can do. So, all right. So here's our pinned block, but let's talk about how we get to this page. So I literally am just having you cut a six or a six 
eight and a half inch white background block. I was gonna have you guys piece this and I decided, oh good, Carla says, we'll cheer you on. And I decided to not put anybody, including myself, through that today. I don't have time for that today. So we decided to do the right edge applique. So on my uploaded instructions, you're gonna get um, a six, an outlined six. And what I'm gonna have you do is print it off on your own paper at home. The measurement this way, the length measurement is about four and three quarter inches. So you'll know you have it scaled right for printing to print the right size template like this at four and three quarter inches up and down. Um, what I did was then I took my my pattern and I stuck it underneath some template plastic and I cut a, a template plastic number six out. And we uh, that's exactly where we're at. So then I went to my fabric and because I wanted to raw edge it, I cut it right to the cut line. So then I have my, my six and my six. So before, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, with my darning foot on my school bell here, <clears throat> I'm going to go around and about a quarter of an inch off of the raw edge of my fabric, I'm just going to stitch a line so that way it is adhered onto the fabric. I'm gonna use I'm a black thread so that it's uh, apparent. I'm gonna use a black thread because I kind of want it to look a little messy and rustic. I went, I specifically went for that um, look. Ray, are we ready to go to the machine? Okay, Ray's coming, good. So uh, what I'm gonna do is basically kind of free motion this. I have, if you guys can see on my decking here, I um, decided to tension my, make sure my featherweights tensions were all in, place for free motion quilting because it usually does require some adjustment and I wanted to show you I don't know if you can see that so my first line do you guys see I have white on the back how much of a pinprick you could see that was a little too much for me so then I went through and adjusted the tension and now you can't see it at all although I got my backing thread all jammed up but um so I tensioned on a scrap piece of fabric um, to make sure that everything was good. And now I am going to go Sue Marshall from New York. Hello, Sue Marshall from New York. I'm gonna go to my project and I'm going to just echo quilt. Oh, let me put my tape down. I forgot to put my tape down. Hold on. Hold please. All right, I'm gonna put my fancy blue painter's tape uh, cover over my dogs here. So it, um, this Friday, my for my sip and sew, it looks like I might um, be remote. So I'm not in my studio this week. So I'm going to ask for some extra grace from everybody with um, my connection. We have to go to Idaho this weekend, assuming that the winter storm watch doesn't mess us up. And um, I will be in the, we're leaving, I think, Thursday, but I'm in the remote part of Idaho that I go to. They don't always have the best of Wi-Fi signals. So we're just going to hope for the best. All right, so I'm going to start needle down. Mom. Yes. Turn the light off on the machine. Oh, turn the light. Okay. Okay, is that better? <laughs> Not that I can see what I'm doing now, but okay. Um, okay, let's see here. So I think I'm gonna just... Do this very carefully. So if you have a walking foot for your featherweight, you could, in fact, do a walking foot stitch around here. Um, I did that earlier on this first one. I used my walking foot and I just found, I thought I would try it in free motion tonight just to see um, <clears throat> if it was any easier. Pins. 
another um, thing that would be helpful for doing this if you have some handy, I didn't have anything handy so I didn't use that, is if you have a KK, a KK2000 or a fuse of like a 505 repositionable spray, if you wanted to hit the back of your pieces, the number sixes with that so that you didn't need to use pins, that would actually be really helpful. Um, I just, mine was not accessible to me today, so I didn't get a chance to use the repositionable spray. Grandma has a question. Hmm? Oh, my mom says, when you start to sew, do you place your needle in the fabric first, or do you put your foot down first? Um, so that's actually a really good question, Mom. I try, depending on what it is that I'm doing, um, sometimes the needle goes down first if I'm trying to be really precise. Um, and sometimes the presser foot goes down. It really just depends on what it is that I'm working on. Hi, Deanne Hartman from snowy North Dakota. Hello. Okay. Oops. Press her foot down. afterwards and cut my threads. Oh, oh goodness gracious. Okay. Oh, did I break my thread? Oh well. I think I ran out of bobbin thread. That just figures. What do I do here? No, I have bobbin thread. Okay, that wasn't it. I think I just wrapped my thread somehow. Okay, hold on. I gotta turn this on just for a quick sec. Because it's hard enough to see this needle with the light, the light on. Never mind, light on. Hi, dear Roth. How are you? All right. Well, I talked to a, a couple of really nice friends this week. Um, oh, gosh, let me think. So I, I machined one of the centennials that I photographed at the beginning of the week and headed to Concord, Massachusetts. And um, a very sweet lady, a professor out there, uh, wanted to add um, a featherweight to her sewing machines. And uh, is pretty excited about her first her first featherweight, and so that's going to leave tomorrow. What else? I've spoken with Fran this week in Indiana because she is looking for a zigzagger for her machine. So we are trying to find her the right one. Oh, Dan wants to know what I'm making. So I am on my Route 66 block tonight as part of our Quilt As You Go, Dan. Um, it's week 12, so this is the pattern. Uh, we are, I'm currently working on a little bit of raw edge applique on my, on my 66s for Route 66. And then we're going to talk about the quilting on my board here. We're, I'm not going to quilt on camera. We're going to talk about it on the on the whiteboard as to how you know the best do that. Let me just trim my threads here. So echo quilting is a common um, technique for background fill. Very similar to uh, stippling. Stippling is, in my opinion, one of the most common um, free motion quilting background fills. 
but echoing is right up there also. So echoing is a quilting technique that looks like a, a ripple, like if you throw a stone in a pond and the and the rippling effect, that's kind of an echo. It's basically an outlining of whatever kind of motif you're trying to highlight. Uh, there are some things you're going to want to keep in mind if, when you're echo quilting. It is done in free motion mode. So uh, on today's block, let me see if I can turn down the light so you can see the pattern. So you guys can see my echo stitches around the sixes. Oh, <laughs> let's try sixes and not nines. <laughs> oh, you guys. Oh, Sue Marshall says, cool hearts behind me. Do you see the Tula quilt behind me? My wonderful mother-in-law made that for a ray and I needed to elongate the backing. So I pieced in a panel of leftover two and a half inch strips and kind of made piano keys stacking down the bottom. Ray's pretty excited for me to finish it. So I got a couple other client quilts first though. I need to prioritize. <laughs> All right, let's go to my board and let's talk about the echo quilting. Let me see if I can better way yeah all right so we're going to talk about our number sixes well that six looks a little silly but you guys get the idea so an echo quilt is literally just a mimicking of a line in a motif actually I don't like that I'm gonna make it look a little bit more because it's um they're closer. Okay. So what I did was um, I started here on the inside of the block, bringing my threads up and making my locking stitches. And then I went through and kind of echoed around the, the, the drawn raw edge applique line, the cutout line, and came back around and then started my way out like this. Okay. And then when you come into an inside point, you over accentuate inside points. Otherwise, you lose your shape by the time you get a couple of rings out. Um, then you're gonna come around here to the other six and just do a quick inside outline and then around there to where you started. And this is where you're gonna just start going round and round. Again, over accentuating inside points to keep your shape. Um, I want everybody to think about distance between rings. You can either choose to be uh, real um, specific. You can draw it out. I like mine to look a little bit more, I think you can see it better from the back, a little bit more um, artsy, if you will. So I left my lines a little bit more uneven on purpose to give it some interest. Sometimes if things are a little too perfect, it looks like a machine did it and not like a human being. So that's my philosophy about um, on looking super perfect. Um, so I'm going to come back around here and I'm basically just going to start doing rings out until I hit one of the edges. Okay. By this point, as you can see, if I start heading around to the edge here, I'm going to uh, be off the thing. So I'm going to just do some traveling in the very outer edge and fill my corner and then come back down and probably just finish fill, filling that. Can you guys see this okay? This is all done continuously without starting and stopping. Sometimes if your mind is having a little bit of trouble getting around this, sometimes it's easier to write it out on paper first before you go to your quilt. If you can draw it, you can usually quilt it. It's like a muscle memory thing. So I might try to draw this out first just on paper before you go to the machine with it. But yeah, it's, it's a, a fun technique. I love how um, echoing gives the quilt movement. Um, and, and in a genuinely static area, like it actually gives it some, some life, if you will. So anyway, that is the block for the week. 
Winslow, Arizona. Um, and the quilt plan for it, I have the template for the number sixes up on the website. So again, all this content is free. I'm not charging for it. So you can go it and go to our website, featherweightdoctor.com. Go to the um, journal and blog posts link, which is about middle way through the... Um, Don't forget to share the picture I have. Share. Six colors. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, midway through, click on journal and blog posts, and it's the most current post, which is um, quilt as you go so along week 12. I wanted to give everybody, I heard from one of my friends this week on her progress um, on the quilt and I wanted to show it off a little bit. So if you're on Facebook or YouTube, you'll see um, Keller's Six, which is the Instagram handle for my friend. Um, go ahead and throw the picture up there, girl. It's already up. Isn't that pretty? I love her color palette. It's very neutral um, and organic looking. So anyway, way to go Jeanette. Yay. <laughs> if you guys are making good progress on your quilt as you go um, blocks, please feel free to uh, send me the picture. I'd love to share with my audience how all of these quilts are kind of coming to life. Um, I know that there's a couple people who chose to do the gelato fabric like mine. So they look really similar, but like Jeanette's is like a totally different, um, amazing creation. So I'm, I'm so happy for it. I love how it's turning out. So awesome. Um, I will be back on Friday at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time for the Quilt As You Go. I might be doing my EPP or my English paper piecing project if I'm not going to be at a place where I can have a sewing machine. I just, I don't know how Friday is going to roll yet. So, um, so be uh, looking for that. I did have several toasts uh, submitted for the toasting contest. Um, so we'll have to see uh, which one I pick. If you submit a toast to me for our sip and so, and I use it on the show, then you get a free gift in the mail. So pretty fun. All right, guys. Well, I hope everybody has a good rest of your week. I hope we don't get any snow this weekend. <laughs> Down here in the lowlands, snow is for the mountains, not here in the lowlands. <laughs> and mostly I just hope that I can get back and forth from Idaho in one piece this weekend. So um, all right, guys. Well, have a good night. Thanks for joining me, and I will uh, see you. I'll catch you at the end of the week.